Hello, and thank you for joining us again. I am Lilian Agbeyegbe, your friendly community health educator. This is your public health professional and you, a program of the Maryland Public Health Association. The Maryland Public Health Association, as you know, is one of the oldest public health associations in the country. And we're working here in Maryland to make sure that everybody has access to health. People can lead their best lives just because we have healthcare professionals working in the field. If you're like me, you probably talked to somebody and they said they are in public health and you have wondered, what exactly do you do? Who are you anyway? Well, we're meeting one of those people today, and this promises to be a very interesting conversation because this is the first time we're talking to somebody in this area of public health. Yes, there are areas of public health, and some areas people know, some areas people don't know. Very many, very diverse opportunities for people to come into the field of public health. So Ali, I, I could, Ali, you're probably looking at her name tag and you're saying, yes, her full name is Alexandria, but I'll give her the opportunity to introduce herself. Ali, so great to have you on the program today. Thank you, Lillian. It's great to be here. I'm really excited to talk about uh, public health, MDPHA, and just what a wonderful profession it is. Before we continue the conversation, let's get to meet you, Ali. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so... Full name is Alexandra, but I go by Allie for short. Um, so I really, I mean, I guess I, I'll start with college. And um, I graduated with an undergraduate degree in psychology and found out about public health and ended up going and getting my master's degree in public health. Um, I love dogs and I played soccer. So those are just some, you know, kind of personal things. And uh, I've been working in the professional public health workforce for the last uh, just about 10 years. Awesome. So what have you been doing? In I, I totally love the playing dogs and soccer. And, and, and that's very important for people to know, because people think that once you're a professional, all you do is go to work all the time. But no, public health professionals have to mirror balance in life. There's something we call social capital, and that's making sure you have all these interactions. So glad to hear you talk about your dogs and playing soccer. But back to 10 years in public health, what have you been doing in these 10 years in the field? So I started right after graduation, actually working in health insurance, certainly not where I uh, kind of immediately envisioned. Um, but it was a really interesting experience getting to learn um, just about how, how our healthcare system works from an insurance side. Um, the Affordable Care Act had been implemented shortly before. So just getting to kind of experience um, kind of the policy aspect of, of the Affordable Care Act. I did a short time in a sexual health nonprofit as a program manager. And then the remaining time and really the majority of my career has been in public health accreditation. Again, you know, uh, not what I expected, but it's been just such a really wonderful experience. And so the last, uh, I guess, almost six years or five and a half years has been in um, public health accreditation. Say public health accreditation, my ear goes up and I'm like thinking very important work. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about what is accreditation and how important is it in public health? That's a great question. I mean, and certainly I definitely think it's very important. So um, public health accreditation, uh, you know, universities do regional or I should say uh, institutional and regional level accreditors. But then uh, we have programmatic accreditors. So public health has um, a program accreditor that really focuses on quality of education, program, you know, improvement and really setting a standard for the, the skills and the competencies that students need to enter the public health workforce to be ready to take those jobs. Um, and it's also very responsive to the field changing. And so capturing those changes and making sure that students are then appropriately prepared as the field is evolving to take those jobs and really not just take those jobs, but really excel. Um, and so I spent just under five years working at the accreditor. And then I moved recently to a university. So it's been just so interesting to get to see the process from both sides. 
Awesome. Can you tell us some of the things that you um, have noticed working on both sides? You know, I'm thinking accreditation. I'm thinking that you're saying prepare people for jobs, but it also really has consequences for the public because you're making sure that the people who do this work that impact members of the public actually qualified and competent enough to do the work. Is that correct? That is totally right. And um, that is something that I find so meaningful. And what I've really enjoyed is knowing that right behind the scenes, I'm involved in making sure that we're doing our part to ensure that students are trained appropriately. But the downstream impact is that they are qualified and prepared and that they are making a difference and really providing the services that the public needs. Um, so it's meaningful to me to be involved in the student experience, but also knowing that that is going to have an impact on you know, our communities and the communities that these students are graduating from and then getting jobs. So you're probably working on a wide spectrum of things, making sure that the right people are there to teach them, making sure that the curriculums reflect what's going on. And I like what you said earlier on about keeping in touch with trends and the things that are evolving, making sure that these curriculums perhaps are changing to capture the new information. You're currently working at a university, you just said. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and how that's going in terms of accreditation? Absolutely. So I am working with the University of Nevada, Reno, so go Wolfpack, um, in their School of Public Health. Um, I've been there since August, and I am involved in not just accreditation compliance, but also data collection and evaluation, strategic planning, um, as well as I sit on the curriculum committee and the I chair the evaluation and assessment committee. Um, I get to work with faculty and staff from all over the school, um, you know, looking at data and trends, collecting feedback from our community stakeholders and getting to participate, you know, in strategic discussions about, you know, how do we amplify our successes and then how do we also use feedback to make our process even better um, for everyone involved, also not just the students, but, you know, especially the students, but really making sure that it's addressing everything for everyone, that it's, you know, that it captures all the amazing things about working at that um, in the school. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely involved in a bunch of different things in addition to kind of accreditation compliance. Um, and actually, I just gave a recent uh, webinar to our faculty and getting to cover kind of not just accreditation from uh, sort of an overview, but also like how that's impacting our faculty, the, the particular responsibilities they have and why we're collecting the data that we do and how it's not just meaningful for accreditation, but it's also meaningful for us from a quality improvement perspective. And that uh, is definitely something I think that the school is focused on, which I also really appreciate because that's definitely how my mind works too. I you know, love to celebrate successes, but I'm always also interested in how do we make this better or, you know, how do we improve this? So um, yes. I really how, enjoy that. How do we make this better? How do we improve this? This is like more than just a checkbox, like, okay, we're required to do all of this. We, we, we've done the basics, you know, but how do we really make this better? it's good that you're working with faculty across campus, you're working with the students, you're taking them in. I want to come to the fact that you're a public health professional and this program is your public health professional on you. So there's somebody out there in the state of Nevada, somebody somewhere in the United States, because I take it all your students come from all over the country, really, not just people who are local to your area. And they are probably going to benefit from the work that you're doing in your office. Um, how does your work benefit the person that you're probably never going to meet? We like to think that public health professionals, that's where the public comes from, right? You know, we work for public good. So tell me, how does your work impact somebody that you might never ever meet, but you're doing this public health work? So I think it's twofold. So I would say starting with, you know, prospective students, students and alumni, it's you know, um, the the academic preparation, the skill building, and also taking that feedback, again, to make the experience better for them and 
most of those students I either have not or will not meet just, you know, by the nature of my position being kind of behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Um, But all those changes and and improvements are certainly going to impact them. And then downstream, all of the communities that these students, you know, they graduate and then go into and providing top quality care is going to benefit the public and also the organizations that they're with, that they have graduates from this amazing school that are coming in so well prepared, you know, Mm -hmm. up to date on trends, Mm -hmm. bringing fresh and new ideas to improve their communities. And, you know, the students I've met both in my previous job at the accreditor and here are Mm -hmm. so passionate and Mm -hmm. so driven. And so Mm -hmm. I just am so excited to see, you know, kind of that fire and know that Mm -hmm. they're going to do amazing things and that Mm -hmm. I get to be involved right behind the scenes and kind of the skill preparation and also in, um, like collecting data about community needs as well. And so one of the accreditation requirements, in addition to preparing students and engaging alumni is providing community level training based on needs. And so the school has a public health training center that does incredible work surveying the state of Nevada to determine needs of public health professionals currently in the workforce. So to determine what their needs are, whether it's leadership skills, financial, you know, and budgeting management, um, cultural competence, epidemiology skills, you know, whatever it is, collecting that information and then developing these trainings with faculty and and center um, staff that have, you know, expertise in these areas and being able to provide those trainings so that there's, you know, training and accessibility, not just in the school, but then in the public health workforce, um, so that that also then is benefiting the communities that these organizations are working in. I'm so excited, and it must have something to do with me being a public health professional, hearing that not not just people who are in the school, but we're looking at the workforce, and that's what public health professionals do, looking at the workforce, making sure that the people who are doing your work have the training. And I hear some something there about ongoing training, right? It's not the one time you're checkbox and you're done. And it's like assessing what the needs are and then providing those trainings on an ongoing basis. Right, right. And and I think that speaks to kind of the the evolution of our field, right? That and you know, as research is changing or just the needs of our population changing, the importance of that ongoing training and really reaching out to the source and saying, what do you need and what do you want to work on or what emerging trends are you seeing in the field that then we can, as a school, develop trainings on and also say to our current students, hey, you know, our practitioners are noticing these trends. So these are some important things that we're going to integrate that you need to know going forward so that when you graduate, you're able to hit the ground running rather than trying to catch up. Awesome. Awesome. This is really very interesting. Now, I know that you said at the beginning you had the first degree in psychology and here you are a passionate public health practitioner. So let's talk to some of our friends out there, somebody who's thinking, I don't know about public health. Like, how do you get there? What do you do? What are your thoughts on a a possible pathway to getting into public health? Can you start from, obviously, you didn't start in public health, but you still got there. How does somebody get there? Yeah, I I, um, I actually think that's one of the really wonderful things about public health is, you know, our ability to you know, kind of like come from interdisciplinary approaches and that, you know, a non-traditional path is just as great because we're bringing different important skills and perspectives in that ultimately make us all better public health practitioners. So for myself, you know, I was young, early, you know, late teens, early 20s, trying to figure out what do I want to do in the world? And I've always been fascinated by human behavior. And so psychology felt like a natural fit. Um, But from psychology, I wasn't sure what to do. And I started taking sociology courses. And I knew I wanted to be involved in kind of more population level. But I didn't, I and I wanted to integrate health, but I just didn't know how and I had a wonderful psychology professor that introduced me to public health. And I just like 
started reading about it and realizing, oh my gosh, this is perfect. And how did I never hear about this before? And it just felt like such a natural fit. And so I was so excited to start and complete my MPH. And, you know, when I worked at the accreditor, I just had the privilege and opportunity of meeting public health professionals from all over the country and some from, you know, all over the world. And everybody's story is different you know, everybody comes at it from different ways. And so I don't think there's a right way to do it. Um, But I think that, and I think that the interdisciplinary nature of our field allows us to bring all these different ideas in. And so another benefit of public health is it's everywhere. We're in everything. There's so many fields and subjects and expertise areas that it's a way to integrate different ideas, but also to be able to do so many different things. And so the opportunities I feel like are really endless. And so even just in conversations I have with people that are thinking about going back to school or trying to decide what they do, I'll say, well, have you considered public health? What you've already done, you can integrate, you know, and if you're interested in a couple different fields, you might be, or a couple different areas in public health, you could potentially find jobs that integrate some of these areas or work on interdisciplinary teams that integrate some of these. And so I would I mean, I love it. And I always recommend people check it out and see, you know, does it align? Is it, um, you know, are there are the areas I'm interested in covered? You know, I think especially with the pandemic and highlighting the importance and the need of public health, there's more, um, I think, job availability, at least, you know, in certain areas, but also just more attention on kind of what we do. And so I think it's just such a great field to get into. And it's, very meaningful, I think, especially for those that are looking for really like meaningful and impactful work from like a human health perspective, um, but that aren't necessarily looking to be clinicians. Like I always say, public health is, it sounds like such a perfect, you know, kind of road to take. So, yeah. yeah. So this is what we're saying to you. If your career isn't over yet, don't rule out public health. It might just be a place for you in public health into interdisciplinary profession you can find out something you can do are you a public health educator and advocate can you even go into accreditation have you ever thought about it so keep on the lookout if you have questions always you can go to our website www.mdphe.org if you have questions send us an email get info at mdphe.org and i'm talking mdphe and that's where i first met you ali you've been a member of the maryland public health association tell me what has been your experience with the maryland public health association it's been wonderful um i was immediately welcomed so i started as a member first um and i really got involved in national public health week planning and i had such a great time and everyone was so welcoming and receptive to everyone's ideas. And it just felt like a place that I could, you know, brainstorm and, and just kind of um, bring things into fruition with other like-minded people with the same goals and um, really focusing on the state we live in. And from there, I decided to, um, you know, join the board. And so I'm now I've been the secretary of the board since the beginning of 2022 and uh, on the communications committee. And again, just so welcoming. Um, And I've just gotten the opportunity to participate in so many different types of projects and really build skills like you know, the communications committee piece, I've learned so much about effective communication that I didn't necessarily have before. So in addition to being able to be with and learn from my fellow public health peers in a very welcoming and collaborative environment, I've also been able to build skills like in communication skills, leadership skills. I'm starting to learn some more advocacy skills, you know, that really not just help me in my work with MDPHA, but also will help me be a public health, better public health professional in my, you know, kind of daytime job as well. So I see it as, you know, kind of double benefits of improving the health of Marylanders and getting to work in this, you know, wonderful organization. And then also knowing that this is helping me to be a better public health professional um, and build just those really important skills. 
I feel like you're a good person to ask this next question about, you know, what would you say to public health professional that is in the Maryland area and is not a member of the association? I say you're a good person to ask because we just talked about accreditation where you said your work is not just to check you know, just to check boxes and say, oh, we're doing all of those things. We're really looking, taking, collecting data and really looking at trends and things like that. So what would say join the Maryland Public Health Association? I believe it's just more than increasing num numbers, you know, of members. What would you say to somebody who's in a public health professional in the state of Maryland and who's not a member of the NDPH at this time? I would say that it's just a wonderful place to get to work with your peers and learn from each other and network, you know, apply for grants or just get involved in projects that maybe you wouldn't be able to at your day job um, that will improve the health of the you know, members of our state, but also just bring fulfillment. And then also the opportunities to really build skills or just get to be involved in creative projects. Like for example, our communications committee gets to make like really creative posts and flyers and social media, you know, kind of content. The opportunities I feel like are really endless to, you know, use your creativity network, get involved in different projects, but then also to learn those skills. Like I said, I've learned, you know, different skills that have really helped me um, and just helped me build some confidence too, as I'm continuing in my public health career. So I think, you know, the benefit of the skill building also can't be, you know, underestimated. Um, so I, I think it's a wonderful organization, opportunity, um, and it's also opened my eyes to just different things. I feel like I'm always learning about different opportunities or just different things that are, you know, um, that our, our members that work in, in different areas of public health have to think about or that they address in their jobs. And so for me, it's also just a really awesome learning, you know, experience all the time. So yeah, it's great. And when we're networking, we're just, just networking in Maryland. We have a tri-state conference coming up. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. So uh, Maryland Public Health Association uh, has partnered with the Delaware Public Health Association and the Pennsylvania Public Health As Association. Um, and the, our three organizations have been working together to put on this tri-state conference. Um, so, you know, just the fact that, right, we're able to partner with other states to provide really important content, not just to our, our state, but also to the other professions and build that, you know, networking and learning from each other, collaborating. It's just such a, you know, what an opportunity, um, and not necessarily something that's available everywhere. And, uh, it's also something I really appreciate about the field of public health. I think we're very collaborative by nature and our partners in, you know, Delaware and Pennsylvania are phenomenal and do incredible work in their states to improve, you know, the population health and just to make their communities healthier and safer. And so I'm just honored that, you know, we have the opportunity to work with them to put this conference on, which will be in March and um, to cover just really important topics to our field and to our regional area. Awesome. The conference is March 16 and 17, I believe. Ali's been so interested in talking to you, getting to learn that you don't have to have one track to get into the public health profession. You can come from many different directions because this is an interdisciplinary field, you know, and you have landed in the area of accreditation, which is very important. Working in a university, making sure that faculty and students are getting the right materials together so that people are turning out in the public wherever those people go to, to make sure that the public is being served by people who are competent to meet their public health needs. Great to hear about your experience with the Maryland Public Health Association, learning skills, networking, building up communication and advocacy skills. Before I let you go, I just wanted to um, throw it open to you. Is there any last thing you want to share with us? Is something that you think, you know, people need to know about this as well? That's a great question. Um, hmm. I think I would say just in general about public health is be open. You, you know, kind of going back to the 
different paths, you know, be open, be curious. You never know what you may um, find that interests you. Like I said, I had never heard of public health accreditation. I certainly, you know, was not expecting to kind of take this path. And here I am, you know, working in this really meaningful field and working for the University of Nevada, Reno, whose School of Public Health is just so wonderful at, you know, faculty and staff are so welcoming and so, you know, doing such important work. And, you know, to think that had I not been open, I wouldn't have taken this path and had these really wonderful experiences, met all these wonderful people. I wouldn't have encountered, you know, Maryland Public Health Association. And so, I think, you know, just that openness to considering different paths because you never know what, you know, might really spark your interest and and how that can impact your life in a really meaningful way. Um, so I think awesome. that is really important. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Lilian Agbeyegbe, your friendly community health educator. This has been your public health professional and you coming to you courtesy of the Maryland Public Health Association. Tune in next time. You never know who you're going to get to meet. Some public health professional working in your state. Did you know about accreditation before today? See what you found out today. Who are you we're going to speak to next time? An epidemiologist, a health educator, somebody working in cancer care, somebody working in smoking cessation. You never know. You just have to join us for another episode of your public health professional and you to get to learn about public health professionals doing amazing work in the state of Maryland, committed to the mission of the Maryland Public Health Association. You can check us out online, mdpha.org. Have questions, comments for us? Email us, get info at mdpha.org. We look forward to meeting you some other time. Ali, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Lillian. I really appreciate it. Always great talking with you. Great. See you all some other time. Bye.